so hello everyone, uh, thank you for being here. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, attachments and how to you as Android developers you integrate that in your app. So this is me, I'm Elaine, here's my Twitter handle if you'd like to uh, post stuff and uh, follow me. I work for a French uh, agency called Sphere. At Sphere we, done, uh, we do a lot of uh, development. For myself, I'm an uh, Android developer. I do mobile uh, development, but I'm also really, really interested about the Google Assistant and I've done some uh, workshops and some, um, some presentations about it because I really love it. And that's why I became, I, I'm really happy that I became a GD uh, this year for the Google Assistant. So a Google Develop Expert for those who don't know. Um, so as I say, I do Android and I do some assistant now. And the thing is, is that when I get invited or when I go to conferences, in general, I go to mobile conferences or Android conferences. And it's kind of strange because people expect me to be talking about Android, but I talk about the assistant. And a lot of people think that the Google Assistant is powered by Android, that the Google Home is an Android device, that the development behind it is kind of Android-like, but not at all. Um, so I just wanted to take a few minutes to, I don't know uh, what the experience is, is that you have with the Google Assistant development as users or as developers. So I just want to take a, a few minutes to explain a little bit the difference between uh, those, whole, those two worlds that are, that there are different. So on the left hand side, you see what a Google Assistant app called Actions looks like. It can look like nothing because this is only the Google Home because it's a voice application. So you don't see it, you hear it and you talk to it. But the thing is, it's that the Google Assistant is also present on Android and, for, and on iPhones uh, uh, as well. And this is what a Google Assistant app or Google Assistant interaction looks like on Android. It can also have a visual features, but through the Google Assistant app. And then on the right hand side, you see a, 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 a regular Android app that everyone <coughs> here knows really well. Buttons and navigation and everything. So, the, difference between, the, the differences between the Google Assistant and the Android world. On the Google Assistant, when you want to develop something, you um, rely on something called Actions on Google, that is the developer uh, platform to develop, uh, uh, the, the developer framework, we will say, to develop ad applications for the Google Assistant, and as, as opposed to the Android SDK on the Android side. An app for the Google Assistant is called an action, an Android app for Android. And the uh, equivalent of the store of the Google Play um, uh, feature on the Android side, it's called the Assistant App Directory. So it's not, it's, it's not the same. So Google Assistant is not Android, but I, I, I get why people get confused by that, because the Google Assistant is on Android through an application. And especially us, as Android developers or people that are interested in the Google Assistant environment, we get kind of confused because we say, okay, I have this uh, Android app and I would like to integrate the Google Assistant, how do I do? Or uh, the other way around, I have been thinking about a Google Assistant app called Action and uh, I also would like to take advantage of the app that I already have, how do I do that? So there is no short answer for that. The, the, um, Maybe a, a really um, summary of that it would be that it's uh, uh, complicated. It's uh, it's both of the both of them work really well on Android. So we, as developers, we expect and even users, we expect it to be integrated really well. It's not yet integrated. It's getting there. I think I think they're really thinking about uh, Google is really thinking about that uh, seriously, but. It's not there yet. There are some hacks in order to um, um, open like an app or make interactions between the Google Assistant app and the Android app, but we're not there yet. So yeah, so this uh, in, in intro, an intro about that, the, difference, the differences between Google Assistant and Android. So let's talk about app actions. But before talking about app actions, let's talk about apps. 
apps are great. I love apps. I know you all, uh, all of you here uh, who love apps. You love apps. A very clever person once said that there's an app for everything. There's an app for, uh, I don't know, uh, buying tickets to go to the cinema, to uh, navigate to uh, somewhere, to uh, entertain yourself uh, watching videos, to read, to really do everything. But the, the problem is, it's that there are a lot of apps out there. The, the Google Play Store, the uh, Apple App Store, they have, I don't have the numbers, but all of you know here, if you are app developers, you know that it's really hard getting a new app uh, uh, featured or getting uh, a new app uh, um, downloaded. And there have been some studies saying that <clears throat> uh, a lot of users, after downloading an app, they yeah. Oh no. They use it. They use it a few times. I lost. Okay. Well, I, I can continue. You saw the thing. <laughs> uh, but the idea is that um, uh, users, after downloading an app for the first time, they you they uh, will abandon it after only one time using it. So, pretty scary for new apps. And that's, there's another article saying basically the same thing, that uh, three quarters, almost um, even more of the users, they never use an app again after only two, uh, 72 hours. So, uh, new apps or apps in general are dead. Is there no more place for new apps? Of course not. Well, Maybe bad apps, bad apps uh, are that. Uh, in, 2000, in 2017, Apple did uh, some really interesting uh, spring cleaning. They really cleaned the app store. So here on this um, in the graph right here, you can see the growth of apps on the store. So in green, you see uh, Android apps. They have been uh, more and more uh, numerous. And in blue, you see the iOS apps, they have been increasing since 2000, um, until uh, 2016. And then, oh, we see a decrease in 2017. And the reason for that is that Apple really made a really big effort to uh, delete duplicate apps or apps that were really uh, uh, bad for, for, for users. A lot of apps like are not even usable anymore. You open them and they crash right away. And they really made a really, uh, Apple did a really big effort to, to clean the App Store. It seems to be working now, so let's go. Um, so in order to avoid that problem, because uh, Apple is really known for really uh, 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 taking a really big importance of the uh, quality of apps that are on the App Store. But Google more and more have, uh, have also, has also been uh, on, that, uh, on that path. And as developers, you uh, right here, I, I know all of you, if you want to have a chance to be featured or to have a lot of downloads, you have to really be thinking about building uh, great apps. So thinking about the, the UI UX, thinking about the performance, uh, doing a lot of testing through Alpha and Beta that are available for both of those platforms and really take advantage of the system, uh, of the ecosystem, like uh, uh, doing uh, integrating features like Google Play Instant that were formerly the Instant apps on the Android side, doing push notifications to engage with your users and optimizing the, the, the listing of the Play Store pages. Of course, this is not a, at all an exhaustive list. There's a lot of uh, more uh, opportunities to uh, build great apps. But still, there's still a lot of apps out there and a lot of developers are trying to get uh, a place on the market. Uh, so it's really a shame. Even if you have been doing, uh, you have been doing all the things that I said before to, to build great apps, to, you have a really, you put the money, uh, you, you hired really great developers, you have uh, your <coughs> app development is really clean, uh, you thought about the UX, you thought about the performance and not, uh, everything else. So you, you, you really took advantage and you integrated all the features that I said before. Um, still, there's a lot of things out there. So what do we do? 
We use that actions to in increase your uh, visibility on the story or your visibility even for your current users. So let's talk about that. So in 2017, uh, Google released something called the uh, Predictive App Row. For, uh, for those of you who does, uh, don't know what it is, it's on the, um, on the app launcher. You see the first row on the top right there? Uh, it's uh, Google trying to predict what application you want to open at, this cur at the current time. So for this user and at this time, it would be those four applications right there. They have, uh, they have announced that they have a 60% prediction rate on that, um, on that row. It's not that good. Uh, when Google uh, talks about that, they say, oh, it's really impressive, it works really great. But come on, if I have uh, five applications that are there, two of them, maybe I may be wrong. But still, they, they're really happy about that. So in 2018, so this year at Google I.O. in May, what they have announced is the next step for the uh, predictive app pro called app actions. Instead of only trying to predict the, what the next app the user is going to open, they're trying to predict what is the next action inside an app that the user is going to take. Um, so for example, we have here like uh, watch videos or play music or check the weather, shop, translate, uh, get navigation and uh, things like that. Actions inside an app. So to uh, make uh, do a, an example, this is a content-based uh, kind of action. Uh, uh, I'm going to explain uh, later just after how it works, but let's say that in Somewhere in the system, you did a, a search or an interaction with the name of an artist. And an artist is a kind of content that Google's, Google knows what it is. So what kind of action can you take with this kind of content? You can listen to the artist's song, watch videos, buy tickets to the concert, or find the news about it, about her, about him. And then if your app does some of the actions that are related to this content and you if you have I'm going to show that later on if you have as an app developer declared through a configuration file that you are able to do some of these uh, actions right there Google will suggest the action to the user to the system we're going um, I'm going to show it just after so uh, where in the system will the user be getting these uh, kind of suggestions of the next action there is going to, to, to take. Uh, so on Android, through um, the Android um, UI, is on the app launcher, or on the smart uh, text selection, it's when you select a text, and based on that content, you can suggest an action. I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate that after. On the Play Store, on the Google Assistant app for Android, and on Google Search. So this is what it looks like on the launcher. So as you see, we still have the, um, the row right there um, showing, suggesting some apps that the user wants to, to that the user might, might, might use, may use. And you can see right there, uh, right below it, we have two actions that are being suggested to the user based on context, context, based on location, based on usage, basic usage, based on the uh, time of the day. So right here, uh, we can think that this user is, uh, in general, at this, uh, in this context, he's trying to, he, he, he frequently uh, calls his partner, and he frequently goes to, um, to the, his kids' school. So we can think about of uh, this being the, the end of the day, uh, the end of the school, when in general he calls his partner and, and, he, uh, and he goes to pick up uh, his school at uh, his kid at school. So as you can see, uh, this is only an example, and then if it is in the morning, it won't be that, it would be something else. It would be maybe the directions to go to work, and maybe uh, playing some pl uh, playlist that you always uh, play in the morning, something like that. So this is what it looks like on the launcher. 
This is what it looks like for uh, the smart tag selection, as I was saying before. This is an example for an email that someone got uh, planning a, a trip for San Francisco. And then the person wants to, uh, the person who sent the email uh, gave some suggestions of restaurants in San Francisco. And then you can see right there that the user who received the mail, he selected uh, the, this text that corresponds actually to the name of a restaurant. And then uh, this user, right, uh, the user that uh, is using uh, this, he has the, uh, I think the, this icon is for the um, open table uh, app. That's uh, uh, booking, uh, for booking a, a table at the restaurant. And you can see right there that the action to make a reservation for, this, for the restaurant, for this name of the restaurant is being, is being made. So this is what it looks like with smart text selection. Uh, my favorite integration is uh, with the Play Store. So on the Play, on the Play Store, uh, the example right here is that the user is maybe a, a really big fan of an artist, so he's going to search, to do a search on the Play Store about it. <coughs> and then what is really interesting is that uh, Google is suggesting the apps that can uh, do something with that content, so like play music, watch videos, or see lyrics. And this is what it looks like. And what is really, really interesting is that if the user has the app already, it, let's say he has, this is Deezer. So if he has Deezer and he clicks here, it will open the app and deep link it to a uh, search the, with the name of the artist. So really cool because the user, okay, yes. The, what I wanted to do is uh, play, play music for, from this artist. And he forgot that somehow that he had already the app. So really cool, so users can discover or rediscover features that they forgot about your app. So right there, they, they can re-engage with your app. And uh, if the user doesn't have the app installed, it will uh, open the details page on the Play Store. And if the user say, okay, this is really nice, I really want to install it, he installs it and then he opens it, it would deep link it after the installation. So really good uh, way to get your app discovered. And of course, it works really well with the Google Assistant too. If the user makes a request, request about, uh, about the content, you can get suggestions with the suggestion chips that really the, 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 there are features um, that works really well on, on the Google Assistant, so it works the same, uh, the same way play some songs about the, uh, of the artist, watch videos on the artist. And finally, on the Google search app, if you look for uh, some, some content, you can get suggestions right there. So here, uh, Google has uh, detected that this is the name of a movie that you want to type. So uh, this part right there is the things that already exist with the, uh, some, some suggestions and some uh, search results. <coughs> and then here you have actions uh, that are related to, to this content, get tickets and watch trailer for, for that movie. So this looks really great. Uh, so how we as Android developers can integrate uh, those features in our app? So the first thing is that uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about built-in intents that is a feature for the Google Assistant. Um, and uh, App Actions, they rely on that. One thing with the Google Assistant is that uh, people express themselves in a lot of ways, and it's really hard to be, re be really exhaustive about all the ways that people can express themselves. So what Google has made is that they have uh, created something called the built-in intents that are the let's say the most common things that are asked, asked by users, and Google will actually make that exhaustive uh, list of ways people can express themselves in order to accomplish that. So here you can see that there are a lot of synonyms of saying, uh, for um, meditation, start meditation, I want to start a meditation, please help me meditate, start stretching practice after work. All of these are only a few examples of ways uh, people want to express themselves in order to relax. The, what they want to do is relax or meditate. 
And so what they have done is that when you have uh, those kind of uh, content uh, or intentions that you want to, uh, that your app can do, Google will actually uh, do the hard part of listing all the ways that user can express themselves, and you can only say, oh no, the, one, the thing that I want to detect is uh, meditate, or check the weather, or get news. So this is the uh, built-in intent that Google has uh, listed for now. So you can see there are some, uh, some categories and some uh, kinds of uh, activities or intentions that are available right now. Actually, the ones that are really available are the ones that have a star on that, uh, on the, on the, the right-hand side. And the other ones are going to uh, be uh, arriving later. So we can see that the list is not very long. So if you see that your application is not uh, um, the, uh, the intents that are here do not correspond to anything on your application. And if you see that you can really, if you really want to take advantage of this feature, you can make a request. You can make a request on the, um, on the page, on the built-in in, built intents page on the documentation. So and Google has to know what, what kind of features they, they, they need to, to integrate. So please don't hesitate. If you don't see your feature right here, don't hesitate to ask them to, uh, to include it. Um, so it's based on built-in intents. And then I'm going to um, uh, show you later on how it works. But in order to integrate uh, it to your app, First, the, the first thing you have to, to check is what kind of action you have. You can have something that is really action-centric or something that is content-based and is going to work, is be working differently. So in the case where it's something action-based, like for the, the example right here, is like getting a ride from somewhere uh, to uh, another place. Um, this works with something that we as uh, app developers uh, know really well, that is the deep linking API. So if you have something that is already in place, so you have some deep linking that works so well in your app, maybe your app is already um, uh, ready for that. So everything that you have to do is you have to create a configuration file called the actions.xml that you will include on your Android Studio uh, project that I'm going to show afterwards uh, how it looks. And then you uh, describe, we will describe uh, what the action is and what is the fulfillment of the, the action. So this is for the uh, action centric with the URL template. And then we have a little bit more complicated one that is the content driven model uh, that relies on websites that, are, that have uh, markup, uh, that have their content uh, marked up. So here on the example, we have uh, for, uh, a cooking website that maybe has also a, a cooking uh, application um, companion. And then, uh, so this is really, because when, when Google talks about actions in general, they say, oh, it's so easy. You only have to, as Android developers, you only have to include this actions.xml file. But it has kind of some prerequisites to it in order to work. For this, uh, for the action centric, you have already, uh, you need to have uh, the deep link system uh, put into place. And for the content driven model, in addition to the deep linking, because you still uh, deep link it to your app, your website needs to be um, marked, uh, uh, the content of the uh, website needs to be marked up. So for the case of uh, the URL templates, this is what the uh, actions.xml file looks like. So it's, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's only a file that you integrate in your, um, in your project. And then uh, right here, you can see the example of uh, ordering a ride. So you put the uh, intent name, uh, order ride, really cool, and the label. <laughs> cool, <laughs> someone tried to assist them. <laughs> uh, yes, and then you put the, uh, the deep link uh, URL right there, and you can see with the two uh, parameters that you have, uh, that you want to pass to your applications. And the only thing that you do on this uh, configuration file is that you map the parameters 
from the URL parameter to an intent parameter. So it's not that hard. And for the data, it's even easier because the, uh, it's the website that has to comply to all the, um, to the markup. So here you can see, for example, for the uh, um, uh, Coursera uh, kind of uh, website where you take uh, classes. So you see that the intent name is uh, take a course. And then the only thing that you have to, um, to declare is that the parameter you take into account, it's called course. And what is really important is that um, you have to declare a schema.org entity type. Right here is the course entity type. The URL filter, well, you, you would be uh, your, your website. And then uh, your, your URL template, it's not, um, you don't have to put it. The only reason that the person put it here is that uh, he, he put, it, uh, put in a referrer tag to, uh, I think, uh, analytics um, reasons. And this is what uh, a, mark, uh, a structured data uh, looks like on your website. I'm not at all a web developer, so yes, this is what it looks like. So what you have to put uh, is only the URL uh, pointing. For example, this is for the machine learning course. So it's pointing to the machine learning uh, website. And you put a name and uh, about uh, description. So this is uh, how it works. The users somewhere in the Android system will ask for something. And then the something is, is going to be mapped to a semantic intent. It's really important to talk about uh, the difference between semantic intents and Android intents because as Android developers, we, the intent uh, name is we really know as to be uh, being related to something uh, related to Android development. But right here, the uh, starting point will be semantic intents, something that the user wants to accomplish. So right here is maybe getting a ride to CFO to an airport. So it is the system that is going to detect that this is uh, the intent uh, order arrived with the uh, drop-off location parameter uh, set to SFO. And what happens is that uh, through the actions.xml file, you have said, oh, actions.intent.order uh, right? This is what I put in my uh, actions.xml file on my Android application. So the system would make the link between uh, the uh, semantic intent all the way through your Android app through the URL that you have uh, put on your actions.xml file that will map, basically map the, uh, the, the parameters that the system has detected and your Android app. And then on the other side, uh, through uh, the intent filter uh, parameters and deep linking, you will be able to uh, launch your app and your activity with the parameters that were sent, uh, that were detected by the system. So this is how it works. And then uh, how do you uh, really put that in production? How do you submit it to the Play Store? So of course, you do your development as always, classical stuff with Android Studio. You build your APK. The only difference is that it's going to also contain the actions.xml file. You push it to the Play, uh, to the play Console. And uh, the Play Console will detect that you have this actions.xml file and it will uh, um, ask you to register your action on the actions on Google um, uh, portal. And then it's all that you have, uh, once your actions on Google is registered and you have published your uh, Android application, the system will be uh, ready to uh, suggest your app the users. And, but before publishing it, you can of course uh, test how it looks like uh, uh, before uh, publishing to uh, everyone. So uh, in Android Studio, there's this thing called the action test tool, uh, where you can uh, preview, you can preview your action uh, with the uh, developer account. So the way it works is that uh, on the actions of Google um, portal, you will be logged in as a, with the, your developer, uh, developer email. And then 
if you're on your phone you are logged in with the same uh, account, you will be able to, to test it. So yeah, you, of course, you can test it before, uh, before publishing. You definite, definitely should. So, app actions, they are part of a larger program on, uh, at Google called Actions on Google. And uh, what, for the, only for explaining how, how they have uh, integrated that, is that before we had only, we didn't have app actions at all. When we talked about actions on Google, everything, everything that we could uh, develop, it, uh, develop based on it was conversational actions for the Google Assistant. And the thing is, is that they have, um, Google has uh, created some foundations, built-in intents that I explained before, the structured data for the websites, Usage reporting. Usage reporting is basically you um, allowing Google to crawl your app so they can know what your app can do and maybe know a little bit better uh, about it and suggest it to users. Uh, identity is based basically uh, Google sign-in and um, subscriptions with, uh, with Google Play. So for conversational, conversational actions, they have created those foundations. And they and then they have said, okay, maybe we can go further and use those foundations to integrate uh, on the uh, Android system, and that's how uh, app actions uh, were born. But the thing, oh yes, no, sorry, I'm going to talk about uh, later. So in summary, app actions. So uh, when you open an app. You don't open an app because you say, oh, the icon, oh, it's cool, uh, I want to open this app. No, what you want is not to open an app. You want to accomplish something. You want to, you have an intention. If you open uh, Twitter, it's because you want to be, uh, be uh, kept up to date with uh, the latest news or your friend's news or something like that. If you open maps, it's, because, it's not because you want to open apps. You want to get located or you want to navigate to somewhere else. You always have an intention. You always have something on your mind. It's not opening an app. It's getting something done. Of course, sometimes you are bored and you just open something because you want to kill time. But in general, when you open an app, you want to accomplish something. And app actions are a really uh, great way of uh, re-engaging the users because sometimes uh, users, they forget that your app exists. They don't, it will be uh, there um, on the app drawer uh, with a lot of other apps. And what's really uh, a shame is that sometimes you, you work really hard on new features and uh, some old uh, users, they don't know about it. So this is also a, a really way of re-engaging with, with the current users. And of course, the right context, uh, in the right context and at the right moments. Um, so yeah, so as I said, uh, Actions of Google is part of the, uh, sorry, App Actions is part of this larger program called uh, Actions of Google. App Actions, it's an Android feature, works really great. Uh, there are a lot of Android devices out there, smartphones, tablets, Android TV and everything. But the Google Assistant the ec ecosystem is even bigger because you have smart speakers, you have smart displays, even headphones that integrate with the Google Assistant. And uh, you have maybe, in order to uh, build app actions, you have taken advantage of these uh, foundations here that you can reuse really easily for creating a conversational uh, action. So this is really, um, I, I think this is a, a really nice way of you getting uh, started with the Google Assistant is maybe thinking about before, if you have, of course, already an Android app, integrating with app actions and then it would be really easy to uh, continue that uh, development uh, through uh, creating um, a conversational uh, conversational feature for your app for your yeah for your app so how do you do that um, for uh, as, as i said before so android and google assistant uh, completely different worlds but they kind of really are starting to be more and more integrated between themselves but still, in order to, to develop for Android, you use uh, Android Studio and the Play Console to publish. And then, 
you have this uh, common uh, foundation called built in intents that can be reused on the conversational side uh, where you, 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 you will use the dialogue flow, flow for um, creating your app. That uh, I'm not going to talk into detail about it, but it's basically getting a phrase, a sentence said by the user, and then uh, dialogue flow. It's um, how do I say? It's something that is a bit, uh, uh, able to detect the intent, so it's able to categorize the intent. But still, you're going to rely on those guys, so the intent it will be really easy to detect, and you will publish the, your application to the to the actions on Google Portal. And so, yes, of course, and through our convers conversational actions, we will be able to reach all Google Assistant uh, surfaces. So, yeah, so cool. So I can re-engage with the users. I can, my app will be, get discovered easier. I can even start uh, thinking about uh, building conversational actions. So awesome. Can, what, how can I do it? How, how can I get started with that? Well, I have uh, some bad news for you if you really want to try it, because as I said, it was uh, announced later this year at Google I.O. Google said that, oh, we're going to be starting the developer preview a few months from now. They said that on May, we are on October, the developer preview is not there yet, so even as developers, you cannot yet start uh, playing with it and integrating with it, but I hope so, they, they, they will announce uh, the, the, the availability uh, soon. So this is for developers and for users, uh, if you have Android P, so Android 9, the very latest version of Android, you can take advantage of the, those, um, those features. So really amazing, really cool, but as developers, you cannot yet integrate with that. And as users, you have to be on the latest version of Android to see them. But uh, yeah, see, so uh, it's a really, how do I say, uh, I don't know, maybe ahead of the time uh, kind of feature, but you can see, I don't know if you got convinced, but I think it's really amazing and people should be really be thinking about how integrating. And you, you, do, you don't uh, need to be really, uh, thinking about uh, integrating it right away. You can basically get your, maybe your website ready for it, or maybe thinking about uh, your deep linking already uh, and preparing your, your app in order to integrate later on uh, with the real app actions features. There has been uh, two talks this year at uh, Google I.O. about uh, how to get started and uh, integrating in your app. Uh, if you're interested, I totally encourage you to watch it. And then there's one a website with, the, with all the documentation and everything that you need to know about it. And then you can also subscribe to know if, uh, when, the, when the, the feature will be available for developers. So I have exactly five minutes <laughs> to take questions. So that's uh, great. So this is my Twitter handle if you want to, uh, to follow me. And yes, if you have any questions, I will be taking them now. No questions. Oh, that's the first time that I don't have any questions. Actually, oh, I yes. Might have, I might have a question. Uh, thanks for the great uh, talk. And my question is, uh, you mentioned that uh, Google Assistant and Android are two different worlds. And I think we all understand that uh, this is not the same thing, but uh, let's... Some people don't. I have a lot of uh, some Android developers, really high-level Android developers, and say, oh, I thought Google Assistant was actually Android. It's not. So, yeah. Yeah, but uh, maybe I'm wrong, but is it true that Google Assistant requ requires uh, Android to be working? No, not at all. Okay, so I am wrong. Right? <laughs> yes, because yeah, you see. Surprising. <laughs> <laughs> you see, yes, because people when people people think about the Google Assistant, oh, it's from Google, and it's something maybe like if, a little bit like Android because it works on Android. So people make that link. Yeah. There's no link, because when you see a device like the Google Home, it doesn't run on Android. It runs. I don't know exactly what the system that it works on. It's something like Google Cast or something like that. It's something like the Chromecast, you know. 
it's not Android at all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, people get really confused about that. Yes. Oh, you got a prize? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> oh, no question. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that uh, there's some kind of review process needed uh, to register a new action. Review? Uh, review. Yes. Yeah, like, like the new action is yes. reviewed by, by Google. Do you know what are the terms? Uh, so, for example, why my action can get rejected or what conditions? I got apps that were rejected. Um, not through this. I, I think that those ones are like mm, s more simple actions, so it would be really hard to get them rejected. I don't know. But I have had uh, made, I have made, uh, developed some uh, only conversational actions and uh, to the Google Assistant, and I have being rejected sometimes. The first thing is not having like a real privacy, privacy policy uh, link, but I think you can't even submit it now if you don't have it. Another thing that you have when you publish uh, an app that is uh, an action that is available in several languages, you have to be really uh, careful about um, respecting the language of the user because the problem that I had is that the content was either in French or in English of the action. It, not, it was not translated well on both. So when the user used the, the app on uh, English, maybe you, he would get some uh, content in French. And that's not at all uh, it's really weird because it's going to be, uh, be read to the user, so it's going to be really a bad experience because it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, correspond to it. So, Google Google detects when your content of the your action is not uh, um, how do you say is not uh, well uh, suited for for the language. That and what else? I had one action that was um, rejected too, but it's completely different subject. It is because it was for uh, kids for children. And at the time, it was maybe one year ago, uh, Google didn't accept uh, actions for children yet because they didn't have the regulations. Um, and they are going to test it. The, someone is going to see if it works well. And one reason is uh, to be rejected. Uh, I, I, I haven't got, the, uh, got that reason, but uh, um, some other friends of mine have, is that you keep the, the mic open because you, you do like your interaction, your voice interaction. Oh, what's your name? Is this? Oh, what's your name? Is this? And then your action will say something that should end the conversation, but it doesn't end the conversation. It keeps the conversation going. So there's actually two, two you have to end the conversation there. So if you don't end the conversation, you would get rejected too. Mm, so yeah, there, I think there are a few, few more reasons. But is it somehow documented? The reasons, yes. They are on the documentation, I can show it to you afterwards. Uh, it's really, they, they, they try uh, to, to be really um, explicit about what they are, uh, they are um, expecting for you, uh, of you as a developer. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so if you have any further questions, Oh, ah, you'll get the price too. <laughs> if you have any further questions, I'll be hanging around uh, uh, afterwards. So yes, thank you very much.